In this video, we wanted to take a detour from our core concept topic and talk about the general direction of a cross product. Okay, and the reason why we're doing this is we're trying to figure out the direction of the magnetic field in the case of a ring of current, and we need to figure out what arrow we're going to draw through this point here. What magnetic field are we going to draw here? And so it's a bit something we got to work on here. So, direction of the cross product works like this, and you may remember this from your calculus class or whatnot. This is the generalized cross product here. We're saying that vector A is the cross of B and C. And so how do you figure out the direction of A? Well, a couple things. Remember, it is actually a vector. The cross product returns a vector as its result. Um, unlike its cousin, the cross product, if I took A to be B dot C, B and C can be the vectors and even the same vectors, but A is a scalar in the case of a dot product. In the case of the cross product, it comes out to be a vector. That means we need some way of determining the direction of that vector. The way I always remember it, you probably have your favorite way, here's mine. I try to visualize the two vectors, B, maybe pointing this way, and maybe vector C pointing that way. Uh, because you can always do this. If you have vectors in space, you can always sort of draw where they exist. Uh, and by B here, I don't at the moment mean magnetic field. They're just some general letters that I'm using. But the way I figure out the direction of the cross product is the same right-hand rule that we use to figure out the direction of the magnetic field around a wire. I'm going to put my, but it's the same right hand rule, but it's a bit different in application. It's going to work like this. I'm going to take my fingertips and I'm going to put them in the direction of always the first vector. In this case, it's B. Okay? So I'll put my fingertips in the direction of B like this. No matter where it is or no matter how I have to twist my hand, I always put my fingertips in the direction of B. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist my fingertips, I'm going to curl my fingertips in the direction of the other vector, which in this case is C. And when I do that, so fingertips in the direction of B, curl in the direction of C, my thumb will point in the direction of the A vector. So in this case here, if B is this way, I curl into C, point straight up like that, the vector A is going to be something that's going to point straight up at my face like that. So A is going to be in a direction like that. If you want to see a bit of 3D perspective, again, always kind of difficult to draw on a two-dimensional page. There's vector B, there's vector C. A would always point straight up like that. The important takeaway from this, at least insofar as our magnetic field calculation goes, is that vector A, and this is true of any cross product here, that resultant vector is always, always, always perpendicular to the two constituent vectors that went into the problem there. So try to remember that. That's just the way the cross product works. Right-hand rule delivers that, and that's the way it goes there. So why are we so interested in the direction of a cross product? Because the biot savart law, which is our core law for where magnetic fields come from, says there's a cross product in there. These are all just a bunch of constants, mu naught and 4 pi and i and r squared to scale things up as needed, but the direction of this b, which is a vector, comes from the ultimate direction of this cross product right here. So as you can see, I'll have some current traveling here, and x here, in this case here, is sort of refers to uh, the direction of the current, because the wire is going to have some direction, maybe it's going along the, the x or y or z ax or some combination of them, and that carries the current, so it matters what is the cross product result of the direction of that current at that moment and the observation point. That's why I need to know the direction of a cross product. So I'm going to end this video. I'm going to return back to the ring derivation that we're working on. But please try to remember, A, the right-hand rule, and B, for a cross product, the resultant is always perpendicular to both B and C. So that'll be important.